What's up everyone, Bessim here from D-Sport Magazine and behind me is the 2018 Honda Civic Type R. We're going to be doing a test and tune. Doug from Honda is going to be joining us a little bit later to test out the Flash Pro for the Honda Civic Type R. So check it out. Hi, I'm Doug McMillan from Hondata and I'm here at D-Sport today testing a 2018 Civic Type R. The first thing we're doing is to test with a stock calibration and see what sort of power and torque it makes. Uh, but we've also done some testing immediately after that and we've put our 91 octane tuned reflash for the Civic Type R. The important things about the testing procedure is we need to keep everything nice and cool. We run a lot of cooling air and we allow about three minutes worth of cooling between dyno runs. We don't just do our testing based off one dyno run, we do multiple dyno runs. In this case, we've taken three dyno runs and we've picked the best out of the three, or the most consistent out of the three. One of the really useful things about the Honda Flash Pro software is the ability to data log. It's the ability to record all the sensors with all the values and what are they doing. Uh, when you first look at this, it's going to be really complicated. There's a lot of sensors, but you just pick one at a time. You look at temperatures, you look at pressures, and you learn what your engine is doing. If you want to learn, data logging is the way to do it. For example, let's just have a look at a few quick things here. Uh, the first thing will be boost. So we have a little graph down here of what our RPM and what our boost is as far as manifold absolute pressure. That's called MAP. We have many other things we can have a look at. So let's have a look at temperatures. So when we're dynoing, we try and keep our temperatures consistent. So we start the dyno run, in this case at about 75 Fahrenheit intake air temperature into the filter and about 104 in the charge pipe. And at the top end of the dyno run, uh, it's very much the same. So that's telling us how well our intercooler is working and are we getting a good supply of cool air to the engine. But probably most importantly of all is look for knock. So if we have a look at ignition timing, we have individual cylinder knock recording. So we can record the amount of knock happening on cylinders 1, 2, and 3, and 4. And if the engine is knocking, it's not tuned optimally. Either your fuel octane is too low, or the tuning has been a little bit too aggressive. The goal is to tune it with the minimal amount of knock possible. But in tuning, and once you learn to work with Honda engines, you need and you will end up understanding that more boost doesn't make more power. More boost makes more heat, and more heat makes more knock, and in many cases, more boost makes less power. So you use the data logging to understand the relationship between the temperatures, the boost pressure, the knock levels, and finding your way towards the maximum amount of safe, usable power. So we've done a baseline test with the Honda Flash Pro 91 calibration. Now, we've taken a look at exploring the different parameters you can change. We can change boost, we can change ignition, we can change air fuel. So let's go in. We've taken the air charge, which is effectively the amount of boost that we can put in, and we've upped that by 5%. Does that give us any more power? In fact, it doesn't. Our calibration is pretty well optimized for the boost level. So adding that 5% more boost has given us absolutely no more power. Okay, negative results are also good. So we took that same boost control parameter and we reduced the boost by 5% over stock. And as we expected, the power came down. All right, so what this tells us is that the boost curve we have programmed for the 91 octane calibration is pretty optimal. All right, let's try some other things. Let's take the ignition timing and subtract two degrees of ignition timing and run our dyno again. All right. Two degrees timing lost us power all the way through. All right. So obviously taking timing out in this situation doesn't increase the power. So what about adding two degrees of ignition timing? Actually, this did gain us some power. From about 4,500 RPM to redline, we picked up 5 to 10 horsepower all the way through. Are we going to go onto the street with this? Not for this particular vehicle, no. Hondata has built some safety margin into their calibration. So if for whatever reason the fuel octane, the fuel that filled up at the, at the filling station is very low quality, you've got a little bit of 
a little bit of margin for error there. But if you're the kind of owner who runs only the best octane, highest octane fuel, then you can have this calibration tuned for more horsepower should you wish. So the calibration is not at its limit. There is margin and there's safety. This is well tuned and well tested and we road test but also we track test and we'll test these vehicles on the racetrack for 25 hours at a time and uh, make sure our calibrations are, are good enough for our races.